Hi guys. I regret to announce it has turned into a gloomy day here in the end times in paradise along the shores of Baker Lake at the bottom of this volcano here in Washington on this gloomy, oh shit, Thursday morning, August 24th, 2017. And I am uh, thrilled to announce I have found this man hitchhiking along the road. This is Paul the Thoughtful Wanderer has uh, decided to pay us a visit and after talking to this man yesterday evening, uh, I think we need to hear from uh, Paul the Thoughtful Wanderer. All I know about this fellow is he took the red pill about 10 years ago and apparently about, let's see, in January of 2009, he, this man quit his job as a ferry boat captain and has been wandering around thoughtfully, thoughtfully <laughs> thinking about the state of the planet since then. And this man does not have a car. He is not a breeder, does not own a gas-sucking car. So uh, he is my new Humpty Dumpty tribe hero. And we're just going to turn it over to Paul. And, uh, and, and my questions to you, Paul, are, are, are very simple. Uh, if you're not aware of the Humpty Dumpty tribe interview, there's basically two questions. How fucked are we, and what are we going to do about it? The floor is yours. Thanks, Ambo. Uh, and thanks, Sancho, Dr. Sancho, to you. <laughs> um, well, I think your sign describes exactly where we're at on the planet. So fucked. Yeah, and, I, and uh, you know, all you have to do is take a look around and... Uh, you know, you follow a little bit of the science. You don't have to dig too deep nowadays to find out that, you know, things are falling off the rails at a rapid rate of knots. And there's not really anything that we could do that's going to change it. This, this is not a problem to be fixed. So, um... A predicament is what they call it. Yes. And, uh, you know, so you can, you can, not you personally, but people can talk about windmills and solar panels till the cows come home, that isn't going to fix any of the situations that we find ourselves in. So, so here we are. And, and then, so then that, for me, uh, brings up the question, well, how are you going to, how are you going to spend the rest of your life? If, if this is the case, and I truly believe that that's the situation, that we, we are all going to be going away in the not too distant future, then the question becomes, well, what do you, now what are you going to do with your time? And in, in, it's partly, uh, it's a blessing in a way. I, I think since I've kind of come to this realization over the years that um, I get so much more out of every day now than I ever used to before. And I notice things that, that I never would have, you know, like last night when we were sitting down here and the light on the trees on the slope on the eastern shore there, it was just stunning. And something like that would have happened years ago. I might not have even noticed it, paid attention to it. And so, um, so that's a good thing. You know, I, you know, you know. I think there's this impression that people like yourself and myself and the doctor here um, uh, are moping around 24 hours a day. And for me, it's, a, it's the exact opposite. I just, I just enjoy being alive. I'm glad that I was, was even born. That's. Uh, that's something that most of us don't think about either. Like we were mentioning last night, the fact that you you actually were born. So here you are getting to experience all of this. And so yeah, life is wonderful. And uh, it's just kind of one big adventure until, until it isn't uh, anymore. Until, until the final big adventure. Yeah, and, and it's so nice. <laughs> and I guess the other thing too is the, that as time goes by, I enjoy much more spending time out in nature than in in the city environment or any urban environment. So so that's a good thing too. So I mean I it's it's uh, uh, it's really fucked up but we we're here and we have the uh, you know the ability to enjoy it while it's while we still are. So get at it. Yeah, well we, we can almost wrap it up here but of course I got a couple more questions. Uh, so you you are not a breeder, 
thank you for uh, for that gift for to to the planet. T tell us a little bit about that. At what age you're? you're what do you say? You're 62 now. At what age did you understand that you were not going to bring children onto this planet? And looking back on that decision, are any regrets for that decision? Oh, in my early 20s, and I was, and and I guess, well, I guess I could say this sounds selfish, but I guess it depends on how you take it. But you know, I I was fortunate enough to be traveling in my early 20s and I was really enjoying the fact that I could move from place to place unencumbered and I and I realized then that you know you know this this is not going to be possible if I'm going to be settling down somewhere and having a family and I really enjoy this wandering lifestyle obviously I do because I'm still doing it still 40 know. years later so so yeah I that it was in my early 20s and and certainly no regrets not so the, the decision was was more your own personal freedom more than uh, th than the the ecological implications of the decision. Would you say that when when you made it? Absolutely, because in my twenties I had no clue about anything with regard to the environment. You know, I really kind of I was just like everybody else, just living living life and not really thinking about uh, all the resources as we call them that we use just to create the lifestyle that we've been uh, you know, had the luxury of living so yeah i was just living like everybody else so, so this man has like i mean not even counting my house on an acre and a half of land in texas i mean this man is stripped down <laughs> uh good lord now you say you do have a little, a, a small storage locker in, in Vancouver that you're thinking about giving up. It sounds like. Yeah, it's probably about as big as the chair and my, and myself sitting here. <laughs> Maybe not even this big. So uh, uh, I've had that. I lived on my sailboat in Vancouver for the years that I was living in Vancouver, and um, and at one point because I've been house sitting and pet sitting for well more of six and a half years now at one point I was getting so many house sits I was never on my sailboat and I'm paying 600 bucks a month for the mortgage in Vancouver to live on my boat and I love living on my boat but I thought you know I was oh. I think the last year that I was on my boat I was only on it maybe two months out of the 12 and I thought this is just a waste of money crazy so so I sold the boat but then I got this little pile of stuff on the boat that I got to do something with and I'm no different than anybody else in the fact that we've got you know, those sentimental photographs, your grade one report card for whatever reason, or who knows what it is, books and uh, bicycle tools and... Do you have a bicycle still? Yeah, I have a bicycle. In it's the in your storage shed? Well, no, it's not there. It used to be there, but now my bike is in Bellingham at the moment. So, um, yeah, so I've got those, those few little bits and pieces, but, you know, and I think I mentioned this to you last night, you know, I, I occasionally go there, and it's only occasionally... Um, you know, you pay your 50 bucks a month for this little thing and everything just sits in this little dark hole, you know, 365 days a year. You don't even get a chance to look at the photographs uh, anymore. And I sometimes think, well, you let know, it go. just take this whole, you know, go there one day and rent a car, load it all up and take it to the, take it to the dump and call it a day. I mean, you got to, you have to let go of everything eventually. So one way or the other. So. Anyway, I so when it all comes down, you're not going to fall because you already jumped. I guess so. From from a personal possessions point yeah. of view, yeah, I think I, I jumped a long, long time ago. So, yeah, I mean, the car, I haven't had a car since 1993, so. Wow, 1993, this man. <laughs> Even before he pulled his head out of his ass. So what was it in the year 2000? Was, was there a particular event? What was it, I believe you said it was... About 10 years ago? What was 2005. It? Oh, so you're 12 years ago. So he has me beat by three years. So what, what was there a particular event in your own life that got you to eat the red pill and pull your head out of your ass and start looking around <laughs> at what's going on? Yes, uh, I was visiting Australia. I lived in Australia for many years, and uh, I still have a friend down there, Dave, and I was visiting him in 2005, and he happened to be reading a book by an Australian anthropologist named Tim Flannery called The Weathermakers. The Weathermakers by Tim Flannery. 
And he said, you know, you should read this book. And so I thought, okay, I'll read this book. And it was like, shit. <laughs> and this was this book was written probably in 2003 or four. It was published yeah. in 2005. And, you know, the state of affairs is, has gone exponentially worse since then. I think and he saves a chip even let it go. Go get it, John. Go get it. Go get it. Go. <laughs> I was looking at me there like, would you tell this man to let me go? <laughs> there goes the co-star. See you, uh, Sancho. Doc. <laughs> See you, doctor. So um, it is so. That so, was 2005. Yeah. 12 years so ago. It, and and I I just couldn't believe what I was reading then. Thinking, man, oh man, I had no idea, I had no clue, and uh, and so then I just that, you know that opened the floodgates, and then I just started reading. It. Reading and reading and reading, and so yeah, and I, and I'm kind of prattling on here a bit, but during those years, you know, so five, six, seven, maybe 2008, I was the uh, proselytizing climate change, you know, guy up on my up on my soapbox trying to scream to the world to everybody. Did anyone listen? Are. No, no. And I don't talk to virtually any of those people anymore. And that's sad, but it's just the way things have gone, and I accept it, and I try to accept most things nowadays, um, and, and just say, well, okay, that's the way it's turned out. This is the direction my life has gone. I'm still a happy guy. I, I get up every day. I'm one of the happiest people I know on the planet, so it, it hasn't affected me that way. So you, 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 don't, you would not call yourself a depressed collapsitarian? Not at all, no. Depression and me are about uh, the opposite ends of it. You are a you are a lucky man, a a lucky man in, indeed. Uh, if you if you've kept that out of your life, so you mentioned so you were in your early twenties when you decided not to have kids. Your your advice, if if, if not that there are already people in their twenties listening to Humpty Dumpty Tribe, other than possibly <laughs> Antonio Reed. Uh, Antonio was 23. What what is your advice to the the, the 23 year olds out there in 2017? If you were 23, what would you be telling your friends? Well, I don't think I'd like to be trying to give advice to anybody. Uh, you know, I think we all have to make up our own minds and go on our own paths. But if I was 23 and I studied some of the things that I've been studying over the last decade or so, I think it would be pretty easy to come to the conclusion that this is not a good idea for me to have children. Um, I, I think that that's how I, would, yeah. uh, how I would be thinking as a 23-year-old if I had the information. But, but whether you got the information, that's another question altogether. I mean, I, you know, you just, you look around, I look around and I, and it's the, you know, the, the I don't see a... Uh, what I'm trying to say here. I mean, there's just so many distractions nowadays. It's just, it's amazing. So, who's got time to think about abrupt climate change? Well, we've got the solar time? eclipse going well, on. Well, there you go. And uh, <laughs> and whatever else. So, yeah, it's just distractions, distractions, distractions. And, and you know, uh, and I suppose, I mean, part of the whole thing about having babies goes way down into the core of our DNA, right? And I suppose that's whether you think about that or not there's a there's this driving force to you know keep the species going and like i was saying to you earlier this morning and i don't know if there's any you know correlation between if, if a species like a tree knows that it's uh going to be dying it produces a bunch of pine cones and because it's got to spread its seeds to the wind in hope of keeping the survival of the species going and i'm not sure if that's the same case with humans but it, you know, when I look around in my travels now, it seems like lots of people are having lots of babies. Lots so of people are having have, lots of babies. Yeah, it doesn't mean you've got to slow down. So, and, yeah, anyway. So, so uh, question, and, 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 uh, pretty much, I guess, it is just wrapping up, uh, and, and it's always fine to say, I don't care to answer this question, so uh, uh, just in closing, Mr. Wanderer, so I'm going to take you back uh, to North Bumblefuck here. I, I have to go on my Bigfoot hunt here in a few minutes, but uh, after my morning of Bigfoot hunting, I'm taking uh, the uh, thoughtful Wanderer 
uh, and, and dropping him off uh, on the side of the road in North Bumblefuck, Washington. What is what? Where are you heading next in in in, in life? Uh, what's your next adventure? I'm heading from. I've got about a, a week to go, and then I'm heading down to Belize for a couple of weeks All to right. visit my friends in Belize. So. All right. So. Uh, Keep us posted from Belize. Let's just we'll we'll leave it at that. We will uh, see if we get get a posted a postcard from Belize here in, in a couple of weeks or not. But anyway, we're gonna wrap this up, and I do appreciate Brother Paul, <laughs> the happy wanderer, with his "We Are So Fuck" sign, wandering through. <laughs> Through life uh, with the We Are So Fuck sign, uh, with a big smile on his face. And, and I'm glad you got your sign back. Yes. Uh, it's having a bad effect on some of your videos. Without the sign. Yeah, it's such, <laughs> such, a, such a part of me. All right, guys, you've heard it from Paul and anybody else uh, who wants to come join me here in this campsite. And I will be glad to turn the camera on you, too. So if anyone out there, I'll be here for a month. Uh, Come see us. Bye, guys.